Mariana da Silva Paulo. I am a, a, new, a second year BA Historic Archaeology student at the University of York. I am here in the uh, St. Mary's Abbey in the Museum's Garden in York uh, to speak a bit about why this is my favorite place here in York. While studying archaeology and the history, one of my main interests are historical buildings and the main churches and the old place of your ship, worship. Sorry. My favorite one in York is the ruins of St. Mary's Abbey, a medieval monastery built in the early Middle Ages and developed throughout the late medieval period. We are now here visiting the ruins. So I will switch. So here is the base of the church. The monastery actually, which was cavated in the 9th century by the York Philosophical Society. I will speak about, well, uh, a bit of the history. So the ruins we now see are all the remains of the wealthiest and most powerful Benetini monastery in England. Its stories ties together one or two two of the most important events in English history. It was begun by the William the Conqueror to reinforce his hold on the north after 1066 and end by Henry VIII as a consequence of his reformation of the church. The Abbey State occupied the entire site of the Museum Guards and the abbot was one of the most powerful clergymen of his day, on a pair which the Archbishop, 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 Archbishop Archbishop of York, sorry. In medieval York, the abbey sat opposite and mirrored the minster, the York minster. Two great buildings dedicated to worship. The monks in St. Mary's Abbey, they would spend their days working in abbey administration, copying books, trading with merchants, providing food and supplies for the monastery, managing the abbey states and helping the poor. So this was his road, their routines. Visitors can see the remains of the walls of the nave in the crossing of the Abbey Church, just in the bottom of this video, where monks prayed and sang, and the cloisters where the monks washed their clothes, contemplated, and they were allowed to speak. The Benedictine uh, Order, which was the order who founded uh, St. Mary's Abbey, they didn't have the uh, vow of silence, so they couldn't speak. The stone walls that surround the abbey were built in 1260, and they remain the most complex set of abbey's walls in the country. They were built to defend the abbey, and they were used several times when siege and the abbey came to blows over land ownership and the taxes. So here more of the bases of the church. The gateway on Marygate next to St. Olive's Church was the main entrance into the abbey. St. Olive's Church is believed to have been found by Irsever, a Danish warrior. Before the Norman conquest, the area outside the city walls, no, now known as Museum Gardens, was called Erzborug. It was a residence of the nobility, like Siver, who governed northern England at that time. There, was, there is evidence in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle that when Siver died in 1055, he was buried on this site. After the normal, normal conquest of 1066, St. Olavus became the church of the Benedictine Order in York. In 1008, the monks built a much larger abbey and church to educate St. Mary's or adjoining land. It was here that the poor could come and claim alms. The building known as St. Mary Lodge is now the headquarters of the York Museum Trust. And King Henry VIII banned all monasteries in England in 1530s. The monks at St. Mary's were personally off in 1504 and the abbey buildings were converted into a palace for the king when he visited York. The same with the king's, where well, we are now known as King's Manors, where is located the Department of Archaeology where I stood. There was the house of the abbot of St. Mary's Abbey and the after the dissolution of the monastery. 
uh, King Ahab the Eight just took hold of the building and the, the became the the house where he could uh, stay and the other chancellors of his government. Uh, gradually they fell into ruins and they were used as agricultural, agricultural buildings before being excavated by the Archaeological Philosophical Society in the 8th tenths, which found some sculptures of Christian saints buried under the ground in a surprisingly good condition. So, under the ground here, the Archaeological Society found some very and these uh, statues probably were buried under the ground because uh, or because of uh, some ceremony in the uh, medieval period or probably because uh, they, ab the abbot and the monks want to protect the, the status of, uh, from destruction in the English Reformation. Um, so, St. Mary's Abbey owes its existence to Hainfrid, one of three monks from the West Country who traveled north and began the monastic revival. Well, Hainfrid was probably a knight in the Calcarius army, which had a ravaged York, Yorkshire, and he was deeply impressed by the ruins of Whitby Abbey. He settled in Whitby and he gathered a religious community around him. They moved to York in 1080 after wealth, Norman landowner. Alan Roofs offered them the church of St. Olavis in Marygate and nearby land. William II visited York and decided St. Olaf was too small for a monastery and he gave a bigger piece of land alongside the church for a new abbey to be built. He even laid uh, he even laid the foundation stone himself in 1088. Not really enough, the normal abbey church was built in the normal or Romanesque style popular on the continent. It was demolished and replaced in the 3rd century with a larger church in the Gothic style, idly decorated with sweeping arches and the large. Hello again, so sorry, but I need to finish the video, not in the St. Mary Abbey site. Uh, so, continuing uh, speaking about the, ch the, the monastery, uh, it was highly decorated with sweeping arches and large stained glass windows. Like the Minster, the Abbey Church would have been very colorful, which most of the stonework painted. And speaking about what I have learned during my degree about churches and the ruins, they are places that were not only for the worship during the medieval times, but also the center of the community, having therefore great importance and wealth, which was probably the reason for Henry VIII targeting this place during the dissolution of monasteries. You can research them and for this purpose, specifically the archives such as Bartwick Institute for Archives in the University of York, is a great place to start since it holds a great amount of primary sources, records, both for Catholic and the Church of England parishes. Speaking about parishes itself, England, after the Norman conquest in the 1066, saw the establishment of the parish system across the whole country. The parish was originally established for ecclesiastical purposes. Each parish usually had a church and the appointed church wardens to oversee the fabric and the when necessary to raise funds to pay for repairs and upkeep. Parishioners paid titles for the upkeep of the clergyman. The system was not fundamentally altered as a result of the Reformation in the 6th century, but the decline in influence of the manor led to the government to shift local government powers to the parish. This means that the parish now appoints civil officials such as the overseers of the poor and the highways and the parish constable. And it, not surprising, the whole of the manor continued to decline. So, this was my contribution to the special hour of archaeology. Thank you very much for watching this, and it, I hope that I inspire you, in a, a, you even a bit of uh, interest in medieval churches and the ruins. And uh, I, I 
highly, I highly recommend the a visitation in the Museum of Gardens to see the ruins of Santa Mary Abyss closely. Thank you. Bye.